So welcome to all of you in the next lecture in the series of lecture which we are giving on economic survey. So today will be the lecture number four, where we will talk about the monetary policy which was undertaken by RBI during the whole of the pandemic period and since then. So in the last lecture, in the chapter three, we have discussed about the fiscal policy which has been undertaken by the government. And in the current lecture, we are going to discuss about the monetary policy which has been taken by the RBI. So till now, we have discussed that to fight any kind of economic slowdown, to fight any kind of macroeconomic instability, there are two policies. One is the fiscal policy which is undertaken by the government and the second is the monetary policy which is undertaken by the RBI. And both of these policies, coordinated action leads to macroeconomic stability. That is, you can ensure growth, you can control the inflation, right? So in this lecture, we are going to basically understand what kind of monetary policy, what kind of monetary policy which was undertaken by the RBI to arrest the slowdown because of the pandemic and since then, right? So first of all, monetary policy. So in the last class, we have already discussed that RBI has a monetary policy committee. RBI has a monetary policy committee whose target is to control the inflation, whose target is to control the inflation between 2 to 6 percent. Right? So, this is the topmost priority of the RBI Monetary Policy Committee that it has to control the inflation between 2 to 6 percent. And once this target is achieved, once this target is achieved, then RBI Monetary Policy Committee starts to focus on its second priority that is to ensure growth. To ensure growth. So, these are the two major priorities of the RBI Monetary Policy Committee. The first most important priority is to control the inflation and then once the inflation is between this particular limit, then the monetary policy committee starts to focus on its second priority that is to ensure growth. Now, during this pandemic, right, in the pandemic, the economy contracted, right, there was economic slowdown, all the economic activities were put to a complete halt. So during that time, the inflation was between this particular limit. So inflation was not a problem during the COVID period. The problem was with the economic slowdown. Hence, the RBI started to prioritize growth. The RBI started to prioritize growth. But you know, we have discussed already that during the last year, from January 2022, since January 2022, the inflation has been the CPI combined inflation is has been more than 6%. So from the time of pandemic till this period, January 2022, when the inflation was between the tolerance limit, RBI was focusing on the growth. But during the last year, when the inflation exceeded this tolerance limit, so RBI has put all its focus on how to control the inflation bring down the inflation within 6%. So this is how the monetary policy of the RBI changes. right? So in this chapter, we are going to basically discuss all these things in a bit of detail. So before starting with the chapter, let's also do a quick revision of some basic concepts. Some basic concepts. right? So we have discussed that RBI Monetary Policy Committee its target is to control the inflation from 2 to 6 percent and then and then focus on growth right so what are the tools of monetary policy committee what are the tools of monetary policy committee so here comes the repo rate Here comes the repo rate. 
So every monetary policy committee meeting, the repo rate or the policy rate is decided because this is the only rate which is decided by the monetary policy committee. Now, what is repo rate? Basically, for example, this is RBI and this is the bank. And these are the consumers or the public. So public take loans from bank and banks give loan to the public. Banks, public do not directly deal with the RBI, right? So for, just imagine, if the banks do not have money, the banks do not have money to lend to the public. So in that case, the banks will borrow the money from RBI. Banks will borrow the money from RBI. Right? Banks will borrow the money from RBI. Right? And in return, so for example, suppose banks need 1000 rupees. Right? So what will banks do? Banks will sell their Banks will sell their securities. Banks will sell their securities. For example, the government bond paper, right? Which might which banks might have. So banks will sell those government bonds of thousand rupees and take thousand rupees from the RBI. Right? And after a particular period this transaction will reverse. Now the RBI will return back the securities and banks will return back them the 1000 rupees. Okay. So if the banks do not have money on a daily basis, then banks can go and take the loan from RBI. For this, it has to sell its securities, the GSEX, to the RBI and in return it will be getting the hard cash and after a particular period generally it is done on an overnight basis so the next day this transaction will again be reversed so the banks will be getting their securities which they have sold and in return they have to pay back the thousand rupees back to the RBI from which it has taken the money and for this transaction RBI charges a commission RBI charges are interest, right? Because RBI is providing the bank with the money for its immediate requirement. So for this purpose, RBI charges are interest. That interest is known as repo rate. That interest is known as repo rate, right? So this is how the repo rate functions. That's why its name is repurchase agreement, repurchase operations or repurchase agreement because this transaction is happening on a reverse basis. Now, if the RBI, if the RBI thinks that the inflation is under control, the inflation is for example 4%, the inflation is for example, 4%. So in this case, the RBI thinks that let us try to ensure growth. So for growth, you need more and more money with the public. More and more money with the businessmen. So that they can invest more. Consumers can demand more. So, in that case, the RBI decreases its repo rate. In that case, the RBI starts to decrease its repo rate to ensure more and more growth happens. Right? Because in that case, the banks will be able to lend, take more money from RBI at a cheaper rate and hence banks will be giving that money to the public on a cheaper rate. So in that case, more and more demand for loans will be created, which will incentivize the growth. But now imagine, but now imagine, 
if the inflation is greater than 6%, inflation is greater than 6%. So, in that case, the RBI will increase its repo rate. The RBI will increase its repo rate, right? So, this is first, you know, repo rate operations. The second thing is reverse repo rate. So, reverse repo rate is the second tool of the monetary policy. So, the first tool of monetary policy is, so tools of monetary policy is basically what monetary policy committee can do to control the inflation or to ensure growth. So, the first tool with monetary policy committee is to influence the repo rate. It can decrease or it can increase depending upon what kind of objectives it want to fulfill. The second comes is the reverse repo rate. This is a second tool of monetary policy. Second tool of monetary policy. Now, what is reverse repo rate? So, now imagine if this is RBI and this is bank. Now, in this case, banks do not need money from RBI. Rather, banks have extra money. Banks have surplus money. So, in that case, the banks can deposit its money to RBI. For example, let us take rupees 1000. Because banks do not, that, do not need that money. So, what banks will do? Banks will deposit that 1000 rupees to the RBI. And return and in return, RBI will sell the securities. So RBI might have some government securities. So it will sell that government securities to bank in return to getting thousand rupees. And then after a day or on a longer period, this again transaction will be reversed. So the RBI will give back the thousand rupees to bank. And banks will return back the securities. So these are basically collaterals. Because if you want to go to the bank and you want to take a loan, so you have to deposit some, some, deposit some collateral. So this is what securities acts as a collateral. So if the RBI wants to take money from the bank, the RBI needs to give some collateral in return of getting the money. Right. So this is how the reverse repo operation takes place. Right. So, in this case, the banks charges some interest. Right. Banks charges some interest. Okay. Which RBI has to pay? Because in this case, RBI is taking the money from bank. So, in that case, the RBI will have to pay some interest to the bank. Now, imagine if the inflation is greater if the inflation is less than 6%. Let us take the case one. If the inflation is less than 6%, then in that case, the RBI Monetary Policy Committee is very happy because the inflation is within the tolerance limit. So now the RBI Monetary Policy Committee will focus on ensuring growth. So for growth, it wants banks to lend more and more money to the public. Want RBI will not want the banks to deposit money to the RBI. Rather, RBI will want banks to lend more and more money to the public. So, what is the need of you depositing 1000 rupees to me? Why don't you lend the 1000 rupees to the public? So, in that case, the RBI will say that if you deposit money to me, I will give you a very low interest rate that will not incentivize you to deposit money with me. So, in that case, the RBI will reduce the repo, reverse repo rate. Because RBI does not want the banks to deposit money with them. Rather, RBI wants that banks should lend more and more money to the public. In that case, the RBI will reduce the reverse repo rate so that banks are not incentivized to deposit money with RBI. So, this is the case one. Now, if the inflation is greater than 6%, if the inflation is greater than 6%, so in that case, what RBI Monetary Policy Committee will want? It will want that now banks should not lend money to the public. Rather, banks should deposit more and more money to the RBI. So hence, in that case, the RBI Monetary Policy Committee will rate the reverse repo rate. Because it does not want banks to give more and more money to the public. 
means RBI will say that boss, I am giving you more interest. Why are you going and giving the money to the public? I am there to pay you more interest. So in that case, the banks will deposit the money with RBI rather than depositing it to the public. Now this repo rate and reverse repo rate is basically linked by a formula. So repo rate minus 0.65% is equal to reverse repo rate. ठीक है, so the RBI Monetary Policy Committee only announces the repo rate. It does not announce the reverse repo rate because reverse repo rate is directly linked to the formula. So RBI Monetary Policy Committee announces the repo rate. Automatically, the reverse repo rate will come out to be minus zero point six five percent. In that case, we will get the reverse repo rate. So this is the second tool of Monetary Policy Committee. There are many other tools like marginal standing facility. Right, market ster sterilization bonds, right, bank rate, right, currency swaps. So, there are many, many tools okay, to influence the liquidity in the market. So, there are many, many tools of monetary policy committee. We have understood only the two basic tools in the current class. That what is repo rate, what is reverse repo rate, and what is the basic logic behind it. So only one thing which you have to understand again and again is that when do we need to reduce the repo rate? When do we need to increase the reverse repo rate? And second, that these transactions happens on a reversal basis, right? So thousand rupees you are giving to RBI, and in return you are getting the collateral that is the securities. And then after a day tomorrow, the this transaction will be reversed. Or it can happen also for a longer time. For example, this transaction will be reversed after 30 days, one year. <coughs> that will depend upon how the RBI wants to conduct it. Right. So these are the two basic tools, repo rate and reverse repo rate. Why I have taught this thing? Because now we will discuss about a new tool of monetary policy committee, which has been discussed in the economic survey. A new tool monetary policy committee ke dwara laya gaya hai which the survey has discussed about and that is known as standing deposit facility that is known as standing deposit facility so this is a new tool which the monetary policy committee has brought during this period right so abhi hua kya dekho theek hai so Monetary Policy Committee ka target kya inflation and then growth. So what happened during this period since January 2022 when the inflation has been very high. Inflation has been well above 6%. Right. So since the whole year the inflation has been above the tolerance limit. So in that case The RBI wants to suck more and more money from the bank. Right? RBI wants to suck more and more money out of the bank because RBI does not want that public should have money. Because you want to cut down the supply of money to the public because you want to control the inflation. So in that case, the RBI wants to suck more and more money out of the banking system. So for that, what it will do? It will, it will increase the reverse repo rate. It will increase the repo rate, right? It will increase the repo rate. That means it will be costlier for banks now to take the loan from RBI. And reverse repo rate ko increase karne se kya hoga? It will be more incentivized. It will be more favorable for the bank to deposit its money with the RBI rather than lending that money to the public. Right? So reverse repo rate will be increased and repo rate will be increased. But now there's a one problem. But now there's one problem. 
if the rbi wants to take money from the bank suppose rbi wants to take 10000 rupees from the bank under the reverse repo rate operations banks want to deposit 10000 rupees to the rbi because rbi is there to give a very good interest rate rbi is giving very good interest rate rbi is giving 6% of interest rate for example so banks will be much more incentivized to deposit their money with rbi but for that rbi will have to sell securities worth of 10000 because in the reverse repo rate you have to deposit a collateral so rbi will have to give a collateral worth of 10000 to the bank and then suck out 10000 from the bank but but this time but this time because the inflation was above 6% because huge money was pumped into the economy during the pandemic because government has expanded its fiscal policy globally many investors brought their money into the india so there was huge money supply into the public and that's why the rbi wanted to suck a huge amount of a huge quantum of money from the bank but it did not have the required securities for example rbi wanted to suck 1 lakh rupee from the bank but it only has a security worth rupees 10000 it does not have securities so how it can take out that 1 lakh so this was the problem which rbi was facing it did not have the required collateral it did not have the required securities which is required to take the money out of the bank so in that case a new tool was brought that is known as standing deposit facility in which the rbi can take the money from the bank on a overnight basis or for a longer tenure but it does not need to deposit any kind of collateral it does not need to deposit any kind of collateral so by this the rbi monetary policy committee was able to extract more and more money out of the banking system which it was not able to do because of the reverse repo rate operations because in that case you have to sell the collateral in order to get the money so this is a marginal st a standing deposit facility which is similar to which is similar to reverse repo operations except in this case except in this case there is no need for rbi to sell its collateral to sell its collateral in order to get money from banks ठीक है सो दिस इज वॉट इज स्टैंडिंग डिपॉजिट फैसिलिटी आप इसको देखना समझना राइट नोट्स को यू कैन रेफर एंड स्टिल इफ यू हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम यू कैन कमेंट सो दैट आई कैन रीड दोज कमेंट्स एंड आई कैन आंसर दोज डाउट्स राइट बट दीज काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर प्रिलिम्स पार्ट एंड दैट्स वाई यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड इट इन अ वेरी कॉन्सेप्चुअल मैनर बिकॉज अदरवाइज यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू आंसर द क्वेश्चन इन योर प्रिलिमिनरी एग्जामिनेशन ठीक है so this is a standing deposit facility ek tarike ka it is a kind of reverse repo operations only there is only one thing which is not there that is the rbi does not have to sell the collateral to the bank and in this case the rbi can extract more and more money in a very quick manner so with this background let us come back to the survey now with this background let us come back to the survey so first of all global inflation inflationary pressures have dominated the global economic landscapes in fy23 we have discussed why so this inflation which we have witnessed throughout the year it was because of the pent up demand of the pandemic second huge money which was pumped into the economy by every government because of its expansionary fiscal policy and third after the conflict in europe the prices of energy the prices of fertilizers the prices of wheat shot up so because of this the inflation has been the biggest problem part in the financial year 23 and for this globally every country every central bank have tightened its monetary policy have gone for a monetary tightening monetary tightening ka matlab 
इंक्रीज द रेट पॉलिसी रेट इंक्रीज द पॉलिसी रेट इंडिया में कह लो इंक्रीज द रेपो रेट दैट मीन्स यू वॉन्ट टू मेक इट डिफिकल्ट फॉर द बैंक टू टेक मनी फ्रॉम द आरबीआई ठीक है बिकॉज यू वॉन्ट टू स्टॉप द सप्लाई ऑफ मनी इन टू द पब्लिक so that's why every country every central bank has increased its repo rate has increased its policy rate and this is known as monetary tightening you're tightening the supply of money into the market so you can see the us central bank has raised the policy rate by 425 basis point that is equal to 4.25% similarly european central bank has raised it by 300 basis points right so this is how globally every central bank have tighten its monetary policy cycle to ensure the inflation comes within the target level and for every country the inflation target is different for example in india the inflation target is 2 to 6% and for us central bank the target of inflation is 2% right so every country has its own inflation depending upon their own macroeconomic fundamentals right let us come back to india response by the monetary policy committee of rbi so monetary policy committee has implemented a 115 basis point that is 1.15% reduction between march 20 and may 2020 so this was the period of pandemic so in pandemic the inflation was well below 6% the inflation was well below 6% so inflation was not a challenge so that is why the rbi reduced the repo rate in order to ensure on its second most important priority that is growth and for that purpose it reduced the repo rate then the mpc monetary policy committee has maintained a status quo on the policy repo rate between may 20 and february 2022 uske baad se lagbhag jo monetary policy committee hai usne repo rate ko constant rakha hai because inflation abhi bhi was With, within that tolerance limit so there was no problem with that but since january 2022 when the inflation breached the limit of 6% and now the rbi monetary policy committee triggered into action and now it started to tighten its monetary policy so rbi initiated the monetary tightening policy since january 2022 uske pehle to hamara focus tha growth pe and that's why we were reducing the repo rate or we were keeping it as a constant but since january 2022 the rbi has initiated the monetary tightening cycle and globally every country has done the same now monetary development so that is what we have discussed is that first standing deposit facility so this is a new tool of monetary policy committee which has been announced by the RBI right so this facility allows for the deposit of excess funds by the bank with RBI right excess funds by the banks bank se kaha jayega paisa RBI without the necessity of collateral in the form of gsex right so now the RBI does not need to deposit the collateral to the banks to get the money in contrast to standing deposit facility reverse repo operations require the rbi to deposit collateral in the form of government assets in order to borrow money from the commercial banks theek okay. hai when the central bank has to absorb a tremendous amount of money from the banking system to the reverse repo window it becomes difficult because the rbi will not have that much of, that much of collateral right this was happened during the time of demonetization also demonetization ke samay bhi yahi hua tha rbi ko bahut zyada paisa banking se uthana tha but it did not have that amount of collateral to sell theek hai but us samay standing deposit facility tha nahi right so in that case rbi faced a very huge problem but this time rbi has initiated this new fixed reverse repo operations will remain a part of rbi's toolkit as its operation will be at the discretion of the rbi unlike the sdf where discretion with banks has to when the stores are surplus this basically line says ki jo already fiscal fixed reverse repo rate operation tha that is a standard rbi monetary policy committee tool that will be as it is wo rahega wo kahin ja nahi raha hai uske over and above you have the standing deposit facility 
सो फिक्स रिवर्स रेपो रेट ऑपरेशन विल स्टिल बी देयर बट देखो होता क्या है कि जो फिक्स रिवर्स रेपो रेट ऑपरेशन है जिसमें बैंक डिपॉजिट देयर मनी टू विद आरबीआई एंड आरबीआई सेल्स इट्स कोलेट्रल सो ये करेगा कौन दिस ऑपरेशन इज एट द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द आरबीआई सो फॉर फिक्स रिवर्स रेपो रेट ऑपरेशन इफ आरबीआई थिंक्स दैट इट नीड्स टू बोरो मनी then only this process will be initiated so there is no discretion with the banks if the banks want to deposit its money with rbi and if the rbi is not ready to accept that money then it will not happen because the power of reverse repo rate operation lies with the rbi but in the case of standing deposit facility the discretion lies with the banks if the banks think that yes i want to deposit money with the rbi so it can do because the discretion in this case lies with the banks and not with the rbi so this is again a important point who has the power to initiate this process right so to initiate the fixed reverse repo rate operations you need the consent of the rbi rbi is at the leading uh, leading uh, hand and uh, to do the standing deposit facility the power lies with the bank the discretion lies with the bank as it is non collateralized sdf rate will be higher than frr frr ka matlab this one fixed reverse repo rate right because just imagine in fixed reverse repo rate the rbi has to sell its collateral to get the money but in standing deposit facility you don't need to have any collateral so if you are not giving any collateral then you will be charged a higher interest rate so that is why if the rbi takes the money through sdf facility then it has to give more and more interest to the bank because it is not selling its collateral right so that is why because sdf is a non collateralized facility sdf rate will be higher that means rbi will have to pay rbi will have to pay a higher interest to the bank a higher interest to the bank right because it is not selling any collateral because it is not selling any collateral to banks right so this is how it is a new standing deposit facility theek okay? hai okay now so see this is how the rbi monetary policy committee has increased its repo rates you see till till 8 april it was unchanged and from 4th may 2022 Now the RBI Monetary Policy Committee started to increase the repo rate. So from four to four point four, four point four to four point nine, and now it is set six point two five. And in the last February twenty twenty three Monetary Policy Committee meeting, the last meeting as of now, it further increased the repo rate to twenty five twenty five basis point. That means by point two five percent. So currently the repo rate is close to six point five percent. So they go four percent. Se kitna bara? 6.5 परसेंट मैट मीन टू पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट का हमारा आपको रेपो रेट बढ़ा है बिकॉज इनफ्लेशन अभी भी इज होवरिंग अराउंड सिक्स परसेंट ठीक है सो अभी भी जो हमारा आपका कोर इन्फ्लेशन है वो अब हेडलाइन इन्फ्लेशन हैज कम डाउन टू फाइव पॉइंट एट परसेंट बट अभी भी जो कोर इन्फ्लेशन है इट इज स्टिल अराउंड सिक्स परसेंट एंड मोर देन सिक्स परसेंट सो दैट इज द प्रॉब्लम एंड दैट्स वाई मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी कमेटी इन इट्स लास्ट मीटिंग फर्दर इंक्रीज द रेपो रेट ठीक है so this is the monetary tightening cycle which every country across the globe every central bank across the globe has performed theek hai so iski wajah se jo supply of money hai into the economy has been cut down to a great extent but isse problem kya hoga aapko pata hai growth growth pe impact padta hai humne last mein bhi dekha tha because now you are making it much more difficult for the public to get money and the public will find it much more difficult to get the money they will not try to invest or they will not try to demand they will not try to purchase house so in that case the growth might suffer so this is the very delicate balance which has to be ensured and that's why monetary policy committee is always in a dilemma ki samay kare kya already the growth is you know not at its best and the inflation has also increased to a large extent right so this is the challenge which monetary policy committee has faced throughout the year but it has been very much credible it has been very much effective in ensuring the balance between growth and inflation right so 
नेक्स्ट इज द रिवर्स मनी एंड ब्रॉड मनी सो इसको भी थोड़ा सा यू नो लेट एस अंडरस्टैंड बेसिक्स ठीक है बिकॉज इन क्लास वी डिस्कस दिस थिंग इन डिटेल तो जब क्लास में पढ़ते हैं सो दिस टॉपिक इज अलाउड यू नो फोर फाइव आवर्स वी डिस्कस इन डिटेल एवरीथिंग बट this is only a, a you know a kind of introductory session where you just need to know about prelims part which has been discussed only in the survey from from survey perspective that's why iske jo survey ke perspective se hai only those things i am telling so uh, yahan pe hum log ko teen ek cheez samajhna padega money multiplier so money multiplier the survey has talked about money multiplier and money multiplier is equal to m3 by m0 so m3 is equal to broad money and this is known as reserve money or high powered money reserve money or high powered money theek hai reserve money or high powered money ab ye hota kya hai m0 or m3 suppose this is the rbi these are the banks these are the industries these are the public okay so first of all first point only rbi in india is responsible or has the authority to pump money into the economy hai na pure india ki economy because rbi kya karta hai it prints currency whatever notes you have usko koi na koi print kiya hai so who has the authority to print rbi and then this printed currency will be put into the banks and then banks will give it to the public this is how it functions so who has that authority it is only the authority of rbi to print the money and to then give the money to the banks so that the banks can lend those money to the industry or public so suppose rbi has printed 10000 rupees rbi has printed 10000 rupees so this is the liability of rbi this is the liability of rbi right so this is known as m0 this is known as m0 so see 10000 rupees humne rbi ne print kiya print karke this is known as hard cash hard currency so actually rbi has printed so this constitutes the liability of the rbi and this is known as reserve money or high powered money ki rbi kitna paisa print karke economy mein dala hai that is known as reserve money or the high powered money ab jab ye paisa banks ke paas jayega for example out of the 10000 5000 goes to this bank and 5000 goes to this bank so banks kya karega ab us 5000 rupaye ka banks will try to give loans worth rupees 20000 banks will try to give loans worth rupees 20000 over and above 5000 the banks will give more and more loans isi ko kehte money multiply kar raha hai right because banks can get do this right so actual currency hai kitna market mein this is 10000 but uske upar because the banks have lended more money over and above what it had that is why the m3 will be higher than m0 kya m3 will be so this is known as m3 m3 is basically the total money supply m3 basically measures the total money supply how much money is basically in the whole economy that is not how much money the rbi has printed at the first place because the banks have created more money out of that which it had that is why the actual money which is there in the economy is more than how much the rbi has actually printed theek hai 
सोचता ना कि जैसे आप मान लो बैंक को यू गो टू द बैंक यू डिपॉजिट योर वन लाख रुपी आपने बैंक को डिपॉजिट किया एक लाख अब बैंक क्या करेगा उसी एक लाख का अब आप एक लाख तो निकालोगे नहीं कल आप पांच हजार निकालोगे दस हजार निकालोगे तो बैंक क्या करेगी पचास हजार का फर्दर किसी को लोन दे देगी तो टोटल मनी कितना हो गया इकोनॉमी में एक लाख आपका और उस पर पचास हजार का लोन दे रखा है आपने तो टोटल कितना हो गया डेढ़ लाख समझो यहां पर सपोज यू आर अ पर्सन यू गो टू द बैंक एंड यू डिपोजिटेड योर वन टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज टू द बैंक बट यूर नॉट गोइंग टू टेक आउट द मनी फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस इज वन लैख सो यूर नॉट गोइंग टू टेक आउट द मनी राइट यू माइट टेक आउट फाइव थाउजेंड फोर थाउजेंड रेयरली ऐसा होता है कि आप अपना सारा पैसा एक एक निकाल लेते हो कुछ लोग निकालते हैं बट मैक्सिमम पीपल डू नॉट डू दैट सो वॉट द बैंक विल डू बैंक विल आउट ऑफ द टेन थाउजेंड विच इज डिपॉजिट विद बैंक बैंक विल गिव फाइव थाउजेंड एज अ लोन टू सम अदर पर्सन सो इससे टोटल मनी कितना हो गया विच इज देयर इन द इकोनॉमी विच इज सर्क्यूलेटिंग इन द इकोनॉमी इट इज टेन थाउजेंड प्लस फाइव थाउजेंड सो इट विल बी फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड so this is how the money multiplies this is how the money multiplies so if the banks do not lend if the banks do not lend then the money will not multiply the m3 will be equal to m0 but if the banks will multiply those money then the m3 by m0 will be greater than 1 so money multiply it can be greater than 1 it can be equal to 1 it can be less than 1 it can be less than 1 So M3 M1 से M3 M0 से बड़ा कब होगा वेन द मनी इज बींग लेंडेड बाई बैंक बैंक आर लेंडिंग मोर एंड मोर मनी इज इक्वल टू वन मतलब बैंक आर नॉट लेंडिंग एनी मनी उस केस में M3 थ्री इज इक्वल टू एम नॉट हो जाएगा और लेस देन वन का मतलब सपोज की आरबीआई हेज प्रिंटेड टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज बट टू थाउजेंड ब्लैक मनी में चला गया वो इंडियन इकोनॉमी से बाहर चला गया मान लो आपने स्विस बैंक में जमा कर दिया so us case mein m3 will be less than m0 so it will be less than 1 black money ke case mein aapka ye ho jayega theek hai so ye hota hai aapka money multiplier m0 is equal to the base this is the base isliye usko kehte hain hum log monetary base bhi isko hum log kehte hain monetary base bhi so this is why it is called as base because this is actually the money which has been printed by rbi and put in the economy इसी बेस के ऊपर बैंक्स फर्दर एंड फर्दर लोन देके इसको मल्टीप्लाई करते हैं सो द मोर एंड मोर द हायर द हायर द वैल्यू ऑफ मनी मल्टीप्लायर इज दैट मींस मोर एंड मोर बैंक्स आर लेंडिंग मनी टू द पब्लिक सो द सर्वे हैज यूज दिस टर्म सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एम थ्री हो गया और एम नॉट हो गया सो वॉट इज एम नॉट एम नॉट इज द टोटल लाइबिलिटी ऑफ द RBI, it is the total liability of the RBI. So M not is equal to currency in circulation plus total currency deposited in banks. Right. So currency in circulation plus Total currency deposited with currency in circulation plus total deposited with RBI. So currency in circulation. What does currency in circulation means? It is basically the total amount of currency which is with the public. Okay, the hard cash. Hota hai na ki we have some amount of currency, and this is the total currency which is deposited in the RBI. How much currency is deposited with the RBI? so currency in circulation is equal to kitna currency hamare paas hai physical currency hard currency jo hamare paas hai hai na and then this is the total currency which is deposited with the rbi so this is basically the liability of the rbi but m3 kya hoga m3 will be more than m0 and what is m3 it is the currency with public plus demand deposit of public with banks plus time deposit 
of public with banks. So this is the difference between M0 and M3. So M3 is equal to currency with the public. So for example, you might have some currency, hard cash with you right now, 100 rupees, 1000 rupees. And then you might have your demand deposit. So demand deposit, that means your current account. But those money which you can take out anytime. Right? You go to the ATM and you can take out any money. So that is a demand deposit public with the banks. And then you have the time deposit. Time deposit comes with the fixed deposit, which you cannot take out at any point of time. You can take it only after a particular year. So all those FDs and other things. So those are known as time deposit of the public with the banks. So this is known as M3. This is known as M3. Right? And uh, then survey why baat kar raha hai. Survey is talking about money multiplied. Right? So M3 ye ho gaya, M0 ye ho gaya. So there's only one thing aapko last me yaad rakhna hai, which is relevant for you. You have to understand what is M0. That is the reserve money, bro, uh, reserve money, monetary base, high powered money, just ko M0 kehte hai. So M0 is basically the total amount of money, currency which RBI has printed and put into the economy. M3 is basically the current money supply. So isi ko hum kehte hai, money supply. So this is basically the money which is totally available there in the economy. Take care. Which is totally available there in the economy. So M3 is M3 will be equal to M0 if the banks do not lend money. Right? But generally all the banks lend money. That's why M3 is greater than M0. So is it is survey and discuss kiya hai. Yaha pe dekho aap. Right? The money multiplier, the ratio of M3 by M0. M3 is equal to what? Money supply, broad money, and M0 is equal to monetary base, I powered money, reserve money. So, this is the total liability of the RBI, and this is actually the money which is there in the economy. Has broadly remained stable at an average of 5.1 over April to December 2022, compared to 5.2 in the corresponding period of the previous year. 5.1 so if the RBI prints currency and puts into the economy 100 rupees, but the total supply in the money, but the total supply of the money in the economy is five times, that means 500, right? So this is the money multiplier and money multiplier has been stable. So last year it was 5.2 during the same period. This year it was 5.1. That means banks are lending less money. The Bibo 5.2 say 5.1. So that is good because we want to control the inflation. We want banks to not lend more and more money. So as a question prelims may I aapka. So if the inflation is high, the money multiplier should reduce or increase. Right? If the repo rate increases, the money multiplier will increase or decrease. If the reverse repo rate increases, what will be its impact on money multiplier? So if reverse repo rate increases, that means banks has banks has much more incentive to deposit its money with RBI. So why will the bank lend it to the public? So in that case, the money multiplier will come down. So by that, you have to understand all these links, which leads to inflation, right? Then cash reserve ratio. So cash reserve ratio is basically the amount of cash which every bank in India have to deposit with RBI. So cash reserve ratio was also increased because the RBI wanted to control the inflation. So now more and more money the banks has to deposit it with the RBI. Then the monetary policy transmission. So what do you mean by monetary policy transmission? So see, one is monetary policy and the other one is the monetary policy transmission. So monetary policy is between RBI and banks. So this is here the monetary policy comes. And between banks and public, the monetary policy transmission comes. So monetary policy may matlab manlo if the RBI is increasing the repo rate because it wants the banks, it wants to make it difficult for the banks to take money from the RBI. But kya wo transmit ho raha hai? That means whether that repo rate is transmitting to the bank's lending rate and deposit rate. Because hamare liye to lending rate or deposit rate se farak parta. We don't need to bother about repo rate. Repo rate is the thing which is happening between these two parties. Right? So how effectively the changes in repo rate is leading to changes in the lending rate and deposit rate. 
इफ इट इज वेरी क्विक देन इट इज गुड फॉर अस आरबीआई ने रेपो रेट इंक्रीज किया इन डे आफ्टर टू दीज थिंग ऑल्सो इंक्रीजेस बट द प्रॉब्लम विथ इंडिया एंड इंडियन मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी थिंग इज दैट द ट्रांसमिशन टेक्स अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम सो इफ द आरबीआई इंक्रीज इंक्रीजिंग द रेपो रेट but the transmission to this particular thing is not happening but during this time during this whole period we have seen that the lending rate and deposit rate of banks have increased in consonance with the changes in the policy rate that means monetary policy transmission has been better as compared to the previous time now development of the gsec market so this we have already understood in the last class किस तरीके से द जीसेक मार्केट का जो ईल्ड है इट वाज इंक्रीजिंग सो यू कैन सी द ईल्ड ऑफ द जीसेक इज ऑन राइज एंड व्हाई वी हैव सीन दैट यूएस फेड हैज रेज द इंटरेस्ट रेट सो लॉट ऑफ अ लॉट ऑफ मनी वाज सक आउट ऑफ द इंडियन इकॉनमी एंड पुट टू द यूएस इकॉनमी राइट सो दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी अंडरस्टूड ठीक है सो द जीसेक ईल्ड हैज स्पाइक ड्यू टू द हॉकिश स्टैंड्स ऑफ द मेजर सेंट्रल बैंक्स एंड द हार्डनिंग ऑफ द ग्लोबल बॉन्ड ईल्ड देन बैंकिंग सेक्टर्स right because monetary policy may this chapter has also been talked about this uh, section has also been discussed about about the financial stability the financial stability ke liye banking sector is a very important element of that so last class mein again we have discussed about the whole crisis right the twin deficit the twin balance sheet problem kis tarike se banking sector का एनपीए बहुत ज्यादा था एंड इसी की वजह से ग्रोथ आपका नहीं देखने को मिला राइट सो दिस 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 चैप्टर बेसिकली गिव्स द एग्जैक्ट डिटेल्स दैट व्हाट इज द करंट स्टेटस ऑफ इंडियन बैंक्स राइट सो द कंटिन्यूस एफर्ट्स ऑफ द ईयर हैज लेड टू अ हेल्थियर बैलेंस शीट ऑफ द बैंक्स वी हैव डिस्कस हाउ दिस गवर्नमेंट हैज इफेक्टिवली रिजॉल्व दिस होल इशू राइट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड सम बेसिक टर्म व्हाट इज एनपीए so npa means any loan any loan for which the principal or interest payment any loan for which the interest or the principal payment has not been paid for more than 90 days so that means 3 months so any loan jiska interest ya principal nahi pay kiya gaya hai beyond 3 months to usko hum log non performing asset keh dete because it becomes a non performing asset for the it becomes a non performing asset for the bank then what is the provisioning coverage ratio so provisioning coverage ratio ka matlab for example if there is a bank right it has given a loan of 100 rupees to a company a right but the company has returned 30 rupees and 70 rupees the company is not able to return right so now it has been more than 3 months 3 mahine ho chuke hain to ab is case mein npa kitna ho jayega 70 so this is known as gross non performing asset because 70 rupees the company has not been able to pay back and it has been more than 3 months so now it will be counted as a gross non performing asset but generally what the banks do that banks out of their profit out of their profit they reserve certain money they reserve certain money to compensate for the loss टू कंपेंसेट फॉर द लॉस की कल को अगर मान लो ये कंपनी ये पैसा कभी दे ही नहीं पाया द कंपनी वॉज नॉट एवर द कंपनी डिड नॉट पे इन द फ्यूचर सो दाइंड टू बैंक ट्राई टू रिजर्व सम मनी आउट ऑफ देर प्रॉफिट टू कंपेंसेट फॉर द लॉसेस सो इसी को कहते हैं प्रोविजनिंग कवरेज रेशियो हाउ मच द बैंक इज प्रोविजनिंग मनी आउट ऑफ इट्स प्रॉफिट टू कंपेंसेट फॉर द लॉसेज इन फ्यूचर आउट ऑफ इट्स ग्रॉस नॉन परफॉर्मिंग एसेट्स So, इसी के लिए आपके पास मान लो सेवेंटी परसेंट प्रोविजनिंग कवरेज रेशियो है दैट मीन सेवेंटी रुपीज का सेवेंटी परसेंट दैट मीन सिक्सटी थ्री रुपीज नॉट सिक्सटी थ्री फोर्टी नाइन रुपीज सो फोर्टी नाइन रुपीज बैंक अपने प्रॉफिट में से जो अपना प्रॉफिट कमाता है बिकॉज ऑफ अदर ऑपरेशन दे विल कीप इट एज अ रिजर्व सो दैट कल को इफ दिस लोन is not able to uh, uh, come back if that सेवेंटी rupees is not able to come back to the bank so bank have सब money to compensate for that loss so this is known as provisioning coverage ratio and the third is the capital adequacy ratio capital adequacy ratio just understand this is a very important concept which is very very important for your exams what is capital adequacy ratio let us understand <coughs> इस 
इसी को हम लोग सी ए आर कहते हैं नाउ सपोज इंडस्ट्री एग्रीकल्चर एंड सर्विसेज सेक्टर राइट Suppose these are the three sectors: industrial sector, agriculture sector, and services sector. Now the banks have given any bank, bank, manlo manlo SBI. So SBI has given a hundred rupees of loan to industry, fifty rupees of loan to the agriculture sector, and two hundred rupees loan to the services sector. So what is the total loan which SBI has given? It is equal to three hundred and fifty, right? But don't you think? that all these three sectors are quite different in nature they have their own set of challenges so the probability of agriculture sector to pay back the loan is lower than the probability of the services sector to pay back the loan because services sector is quite good in india as compared to agriculture sector and industrial sector is quite good as compared to agriculture sector right so this is where the risk for the bank the risk for the bank the risk for the bank is different for different sector right har ek sector ke liye bank ka jo risk hai wo alag alag hoga right so in that case rbi gives a risk to every sector for example the rbi will give a risk factor of 2 to industry 3 to agriculture and 1.5 for services sector theek hai because services sector has the least probability to uska jo risk factor hai wo sabse kam hoga agriculture sector sabse complicated hai zaruri nahi loan milega so in that case the risk factor will be the highest and in the industrial sector it will be <coughs> the risk sector will be in average of the two things so it will around 2 so now the banks so now every bank has to calculate it so now every bank as per the risk factor given by rbi has to calculate its risk weighted assets isi ko hum log kehte hain rwa risk weighted assets because these are the asset to the bank because these are the loans which the banks have given but now we have to calculate the risk weighted assets matlab we have to account for the risk according to that asset so in that case what will be the total risk weighted assets so 100 into 2 plus 15 into 3 plus 200 into 1.5 that is equal to 200 plus 150 plus 300 that is equal to 3 4 450 550 That is equal to five fifty. ठीक है. So this is the risk weighted assets. पहले कितना आता three fifty. So this was the asset for the bank initially. But now, if you accounted for the risk, so now the new risk weighted assets, accounting for the risk to that asset, it will be five fifty. Now, what is CAR? It is basically the amount of capital. Amount of capital. as a percentage to rwa which you have to reserve which you have to keep matlab is risk weighted asset ka kitna paisa aapko rakhna padega because ye asset kal ko loss bhi to ho sakta hai so out of this asset you have to reserve some money or you have to keep some money to compensate for the losses so as per the basel norms as per the basel 3 norms the car has to be kept as 10.5% of risk weighted assets that means 10.5% of 550 okay so this is how you have to keep the risk weighted assets okay so ये होता है आपका कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो हाउ मच कैपिटल अ बैंक हैज टू कीप 
as a proportion to its risk weighted assets so that in future if any if there is any loss the banks are able to compensate for that loss so as per the basel 3 the guidelines amount kitna compulsory hai 10.5% hai but rbi has made it compulsory that every bank has to keep 11.5% राइट तो आरबीआई ने एक परसेंट ज्यादा रखा है ठीक है इसमें भी फिर टीयर वन कैपिटल होता है टीयर टू कैपिटल होता है काउंटर साइक्लिकल बफर्स होते हैं सो दैट इज समेयर एल्स वी विल डिस्कस यहां पे नहीं उसका काम है बट दिस इज व्हाट इज कैपिटल एडिक्वेसी रेशियो एंड दिस इज नोन एज रिस्क वेटेड एसेट्स यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस राइट सो नाउ वी विल अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट द सर्वे हैज टू टॉक अबाउट द स्टेटस ऑफ द बैंक so now you can see so here dekho rbi has mandated the banks to keep the card above 11.5% theek hai so capital ratio ho gaya provisioning coverage ratio ho gaya npa ho gaya status of bank so status of bank humne dekha tha 2004 se 2014 tak there was a credit boom in the last lecture we have understood there was a credit boom so the the total loan as a percentage of gdp it increased from 36.5% to 57.3% so the total loan as a percentage of gdp increased by this time aur isi samay bahut zyada reckless loan bhi diye gaye the last class mein dekha ki a lot of reckless loans were given by the banks also the banks were hiding their bad loans because a lot of loans have converted into a liability banks were not able to get that interest or principal back but banks were hiding it finally at the end of 2015 usi samay raguram rajan was there and he brought and he told that let us do a asset quality review that jitne bhi banks ke paas asset hai unka review karna hai because we don't know what is the problem how much np is there because banks are hiding it so we have to have a very स्ट्रॉन्ग इफेक्टिव एसेट क्वालिटी रिव्यू और जैसे ही एसेट क्वालिटी रिव्यू हुआ तो जो एनपीएस है एफ बाई फिफ्टीन में फोर पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट था वो बढ़ के कितना हो गया इलेवन पॉइंट टू परसेंट इन एफ बाई एटीन सो दिस पॉलिसी वॉज ब्रॉड बाई रघुराम राजन उसके बाद तो वो रिटायर हो गए बट उसके बाद एसेट क्वालिटी रिव्यू हुआ एंड वी स्टार्टेड टू नो अबाउट वॉट इज द एग्जैक्ट स्टेट ऑफ क्राइसिस एंड नाउ इट वॉज एक्सपोज दैट पहले देखो 4.3 परसेंट एनपीए था मतलब अगर बैंक सौ रुपए दिया है तो उसका 4.3 परसेंट बैंक के लिए एनपीए था एनपीए मतलब 90 दिन से ज्यादा पे नहीं हुआ है बट नाउ इट इंक्रीज टू 11.2 परसेंट उसके बाद गवर्नमेंट ने काफी ज्यादा रिफॉर्म्स लाए इंसॉल्वेंसी बैंक कोर्ट आरफीसी एक्ट में अमेंडमेंट एसेट रिकन्स्ट्रक्शन कंपनीज ठीक है बैंक रिकेपिटलाइजेशन बॉन्ड्स एंड गवर्नमेंट इज ब्रॉट मेनी थिंग्स एंड दैट इज वाई द एनपीए इन एफ वाई fell to 7.3% so 4.3 se bada 11.2 pe 11.2 se ghat ke 7.3 and there's again a very good news that in september 2022 it has fell to its seven year low of 5% so this is the credit which has to be given to the government of india that they have really worked with the banks to ensure that the banks balance sheet improves and that's why the npa has reached to its seven year low in the september 2022 Similarly, the capital adequacy ratio and the provisioning coverage ratio. Capital adequacy ratio, how much is it? Sixteen percent. What is the requirement? Eleven point five percent. So, capital adequacy ratio is also at a very good level. And similarly, the provisioning coverage ratio is at seventy one point five percent. So, generally, provisioning coverage ratio, if it is more than seventy percent, it is good. So, you can see that it is at seventy one point five percent. So, that is why the banks are in a very good position. And we have seen that corporate balance sheet has also improved. and because of this the banks are ready to loan they give loan and the corporates are ready to take loan and that's why you know the investment cycle is going to pick up in the year if the conflict in europe does not escalate beyond a point so isliye india ke jitne bhi fundamentals hain wo bahut strong hai and that's why india is able india will be growing in its amrit kal now so ye dekho these are the comparisons kis tarike se declining Scheduled commercial banks, GNPA, gross NPA, or provisioning coverage ratio. How it has increased, right? Broad-based improvement in GNPA. So for every sector, the gross non-performing asset has reduced. So you can see for agriculture, it has reduced. 
for industry it has reduced for services it has it reduced and for personal loans it has reduced so that is the credit which should be given to the uh, government and also to the rbi that kis tarike se npa har ek sector mein kam hue hain theek hai and because of that because of the strong balance sheet in the banks you can see the bank credit growth non food bank credit growth matlab the credit the banks which gives to the non food sector that is for the public to the industry to the house loans and other things like so you can see that because the banks balance sheet has improved banks are lending now more and more money and that's why the investment cycle will be rising up in the future similarly you can see the status of nbfc तो NBFC मैं आपको पता है uh, 2018 में ILFS क्राइसिस आया था बट बट डिस्पाइट दैट द NBFC हैज बीन परफॉर्मिंग एट अ वेरी इन अ वेरी मच रेजिलिएंट मैनर यू कैन सी द क्रेडिट टू NBFC हैज आल्सो इंक्रीज एंड द एग्रीगेट क्रेडिट बाय NBFC इज आल्सो इंक्रीज सो द नॉन बैंकिंग फाइनेंशियल सेक्टर व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द रूरल सेक्टर एंड इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सेक्टर बिकॉज़ NBFC रीचेस टू दोस पीपल टू दोस कंज्यूमर्स Which are unaccessible by the banks. ठीक है, so NBFC से पैसा जो होता है, it is generally for first in industrial sector जिनको long term loan चाहिए, 30 साल, 40 साल के लिए, and for those people who does not have that you know kind of uh, paperwork and things which they need to do to take loans from the bank, so they go to the NBFCs. So NBFCs reach to those people who are unreachable by the traditional banking sector. and you can see that declining in gnpa so for nbfc also the npa has declined and it has declined in all the sectors so this is the gross and these are the sector wise so you can see the largest sector with the gnpa is 46.2 and after that services after that personal and then ibc insolvency and bankruptcy board has been a big bank reform which has been brought by the government ab isme hota kya just imagine for example I have a industry. I have taken a loan from the bank of two hundred crores, but now I am not in a situation to pay back the money to the bank. That means I have I have gone bankrupt. I don't have any money to pay back to the bank. So in that case, I have to apply for the insolvency that I don't have the money. please sell my assets do whatever you can but i am not able i am not in a situation to give the money back to you so initially it was at the discretion of that person if that person does not go to the bank then insolvency resolution against the company cannot initiate so is us samay hota kya tha ki even if i am not able to pay back the money i will just sit i will enjoy i will not do anything because the creditors the banks do not did not have any power to initiate insolvency pro, uh, uh, proceedings against me so until unless i do not go to the banks and say that boss i have gone bankrupt i wish to apply for insolvency then till that nothing will happen i have to go and apply for that but under ibc this has been the structural change now the creditors the banks can themselves initiate a insolvency proceedings against you so even if you try to hide if even if you try to budge even if you try to escape it will not help because the creditors have the power so that is why it is said that india is now no longer a defaulters paradise india is now no longer a defaulters paradise defaulters paradise ka matlab pehle kya hota tha you default paying back the money to the banks but no one is going to do anything you just enjoy you just wait and watch but now if you are not able to pay back the money your loan has become npa the creditors that is the banks can initiate a insolvency proceedings against you and if the insolvency resolution passed by them is accepted then they will be taking control of your company so see how does it functions ye kaise kaam karta hai ye samjho तो सपोज दीज आर द क्रेडिटर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेटर्स क्रेडिटर्स का मतलब एस बी आई हो गया एच डी एफ सी हो गया दीज आर द बैंक ठीक है नाउ दीज क्रेडिटर्स हैव नॉट गॉट देयर मनी बैक सो दे विल गो टू द एन सी एल टी नेशनल कंपनी लॉ ट्राइब्यूनल एंड दे विल से दैट सी दिस कंपनी हैज गॉट इंसॉल्वेंस दिस कंपनी हैज गॉट बैंक दिस कंपनी इज नॉट इन अ स्टेट टू पे पे बैक बी माई मनी सो आई वॉन्ट टू इनिशियट अ इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोसीडिंग अगेंस्ट दिस कंपनी 
पहले ये नहीं था अब दिस कंपनी कैन गो टू द एनसीएलटी एंड रिक्वेस्ट फॉर दैट इफ द एनसीएलटी एक्सेप्ट इट यस यू आर राइट दिस कंपनी हैज गॉट बैंक इट नीड्स टू बी ब्रॉट अंडर द इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोसीडिंग्स सो वंस द एनसीएलटी एक्सेप्ट दैट देन इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोफेशनल्स विल बी कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड आईपी इसको कॉन्स्टिट्यूट कौन करता है इंसॉल्वेंसी बैंक बोर्ड ऑफ इंडिया विच इज अटेट्री बॉडी ठीक है सो इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोफेशनल्स आर बी कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड एंड दीज इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोफेशनल्स आर पीपल हु आर वेरी मच प्रोफेशनल राइट टू एंश्योर दैट ऑल दो कंपनीज विच हेज गॉन बैंक उसको रिजोल्व कर सके कि वापस से वो कंपनी स्टार्ट हो जाए अगर कुछ प्रॉब्लम है सो हाउ दैट कंपनी कैन बी हेल्प सो दैट दैट कंपनी अगेन स्टार्ट टू बिकम एक्टिव और इफ दैट कंपनी इज नॉट बींग एबल टू इज नॉट बींग एबल टू बिकम एक्टिव दैट कंपनी हैज कंप्लीटली लॉस्ट वॉट एवर इट हैड द कंपनी कैन नॉट बी रिवाइव सो उस केस में द कंपनी नीड्स टू बी सोल्ड ठीक है सो दिस इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोफेशनल कैन आई द रिजोल्व दैट कंपनी or it can sell that company that means liquidate that company you can liquidate the company right so insolvency professionals are constituted by insolvency bankruptcy board of india right and then also the committee of creditors is constituted so committee of creditors ka matlab jitne bhi creditors hain sbi hdfc punjab national bank un sab ka ek committee constitute hoga and this will get the entire power of the company entire management of the company will come under their control theek hai so the entire management of this company which has gone bankrupt ab us sara company aap se chhin jayega and the management will shift to the committee of creditors so that's why the, the defaulters now fear they are very very in a state of fear because the control of their company will be taken away once the ncl lclt accepts their insolvency proceedings against them so committee of creditors will accept their will will take the complete control of the management of that company so this is why now to do not pay a loan and escape has become a very difficult जॉब तो दैट्स वाई इंसॉल्वेंसी इन बैंक बोर्ड हैज बीन अ वेरी इंस्ट्रूमेंटल इसके वजह से एनपीए काफी डिक्लाइन हुआ है नाउ द पीपल आर वेरी मच अफ्रेड ऑफ डिफॉल्टिंग देयर इंटरेस्ट पेमेंट और प्रिंसिपल पेमेंट दिस इज ब्रॉट अ स्ट्रक्चरल चेंज राइट सो आईबीसीटेड एक्जिट ऑफ डिस्ट्रेस फर्म बाई पब्लिक ऑप्शन बेस्ड रिजोल्यूशन मॉडल पब्लिक ऑप्शन का मतलब दैट कंपनी सोल्ड टू द पब्लिक इफ दैट कंपनी इज नॉट एबल टू यू नो पे बैक इट्स अमाउंट टू द बैंक it has led to a behavioral change it has led to a behavioral change right among the debtors theek hai and this whole process is known as corporate insolvency resolution process this pure process ko hum log cirp kehte hain insolvency professionals are appointed by ibbi insolvency bankruptcy board of india and the minimum default threshold matlab kitna amount agar aap nahi dete ho bank ko what is the minimum threshold so 1 crore if the if the interest or the principal is more than 1 crore then such cases can be brought under this particular court so so this this is the table which has been put by the economic survey or economic survey kehta hai ki 553 companies have been brought under resolution matlab those company has been resolved and 1807 companies were not being able to resolve usko resolve karna mushkil tha that's why those companies were completely sold those companies were liquidated so this is how it is and then aggregate resolution value as a percentage of aggregate claim that is 30.8 so this figure you have to just remember 30.8 iska matlab kya hai ki for example total loan jo npa tha jo jo jisme jis, jisko resolve karna tha if that was 100 rupees to us 100 rupees ko insolvency professionals ne resolve karke theek hai kitna value uska finally aaya banks ke paas 31 rupees मतलब बैंक्स के पास आना कितना था इनिशियली हंड्रेड रुपीज बट हंड्रेड रुपीज तो पॉसिबल है नहीं तो इंसॉल्वेंसी प्रोफेशनल से उस चीज को मैनेज करके कितना पैसा पॉसिबल करके रिटर्न करवाया थर्टी वन सो ओनली थर्टी परसेंट वॉज रिजोल्व बाकी सेवेंटी परसेंट तो लॉस हो गया बैंक के लिए राइट सो दिस इज द रिजोल्यूशन वैल्यू 
सो टोटल वैल्यू ऑफ द क्लेम्स वॉज हंड्रेड जो बैंक को चाहिए था बट इससे कितना रिजोल्व होकर आ पाया थर्टी रुपीज सो थर्टी बाई हंड्रेड दैट इज इक्वल टू थर्टी परसेंट सो ओनली थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ दो ये देखो ये एग्रीगेट क्लेम्स है सेवन लैख नाइनटी थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी सिक्स करोड़ ठीक है सेवन लैख नाइनटी इतना क्लेम था बैंक का और बैंक को मिला कितना इतना टू लैख फोर्टी थ्री थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड फिफ्टी टू सो बेसिकली थर्टी वन परसेंट आया देन कंपनीज ऑर्डर फॉर लिक्विडेशन में कितना है एटीन हंड्रेड सेवन गया ठीक है और टाइम देखो कितना लगा सो इंसॉल्वेंसी इन बैक कोर्ट में टाइम लिमिट भी है कि कितने टाइम में इस चीज को पूरा फुलफिल करना है सो थ्री थर्टी डेज है उसका बट दैट टाइम पीरियड कैन ऑल्सो भी एक्सटेंडेड ठीक है एक्सटेंडेड तो देखो कितना लगा है ऑन एन एवरेज फाइव सिक्सटी वन डेज लगा है इस को रिजोल्व करने में एंड वहां पे एवरेज लगा है फोर थर्टी सेवन डेज बट इट इज वेरी लेस बिकॉज पहले जो ये पूरा प्रोसेस होता था बिफोर द आई बी सी एरा बिफोर द इंसॉल्वेंसी इन बैंक कोड इट वॉज अराउंड फोर पॉइंट फाइव ईयर्स ऑन एन एवरेज इट टुक टू रिजोल्व सच काइंड ऑफ इश्यूज बट नाउ द टाइम पीरियड हैज बीन ब्रॉट डाउन देन डेवलपमेंट इन द कैपिटल मार्केट ठीक है अगला चैप्टर विच द सर्वे हैज डिस्कस्ड इज अबाउट द कैपिटल मार्केट सो कैपिटल मार्केट ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है नहीं बट यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड सम बेसिक थिंग्स कैपिटल मार्केट पहले क्या होता है कैपिटल मार्केट वो शेयर मार्केट जो आप देखते हो दैट इज ब्रॉडली द कैपिटल मार्केट सो कैपिटल मार्केट में बेसिकली द डेप्ट एंड द इक्विटी इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स द डेप्ट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स का मतलब बॉन्ड एंड इक्विटी इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स का मतलब शेयर मार्केट सो ऑल दो थिंग्स आर ट्रेडेड ठीक है so, उसी को हम लोग क्या करते हैं कैपिटल मार्केट एंड कैपिटल मार्केट इज बेसिकली द सेल एंड एक्सचेंज ऑफ द कैपिटल मार्केट इज बेसिकली अ मार्केट वेयर डेप्ट एंड इक्विटी वेयर डेप्ट एंड इक्विटी इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स आर ट्रांजैक्टेड ठीक है तो डेप्ट का मतलब बॉन्ड इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स हो गया जितने भी कॉर्पोरेट कंपनी के बॉन्ड्स हैं, नॉट गवर्नमेंट बॉन्ड्स ओनली कॉर्पोरेट बॉन्ड्स बिकॉज गवर्नमेंट बॉन्ड्स कम अंडर द मनी मार्केट एंड दैट इज रेगुलेटेड बाय आरबीआई बट ये जो कैपिटल मार्केट इसको रेगुलेट कौन करता है सेबी और इक्विटी का मतलब शेयर मार्केट ठीक है सो दैट इज ऑल तो आपको पता होगा कि ये जो लास्ट ईयर था उसमें काफी ज्यादा प्रॉब्लम था कैपिटल मार्केट वॉज वेरी वॉलेटाइल बिकॉज यूएस फेड ने जैसे ही इंक्रीज किया मॉनिटरी टाइटनिंग सो लॉट ऑफ पीपल टुक देयर मनी आउट ऑफ द इंडस इंडियन कैपिटल मार्केट एंड दे शिफ्टेड देयर मनी टू द यूएस कैपिटल मार्केट इसीलिए दिस मार्केट वॉज वेरी वॉलेटाइल ड्यूरिंग दिस होल ईयर ठीक है सो लेट एस अंडरस्टैंड द टूल्स ऑफ प्राइमरी मार्केट सो सबसे पहले आपने नाम सुना होगा इनिशियल पब्लिक ऑफर आईपीओ सो आईपीओ क्या होता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई हैव अ कंपनी Or suppose you are uh, 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 watching this lecture. Uh, uh, so suppose ki any institute, for example, Janakya IS Institute issues its share to the public for the first time. For the first time, it has never done that thing in the past. It is doing this for the first time. So that is known as IPO. So whenever a company which has for the first time issued a share to the public so one is a private company and the second one is a public company private company ka matlab those companies which has not issued its share to the public but a public company means a company which has issued its share to the public so whenever a private company for the first time thinks about selling its share to the public that offer is known as ipo that offer is known as ipo so suppose this company was there it has its 100% share the promoter the promoter had 100% share now the company decides to sell 20% of share to the public so this is happening for the first time so this is known as ipo pehli baar but now for example in 2023 the company sold 20% share for the first time now in 2024 the company intends to sell more 10% matlab now it tries to sell extra 10% of share to pehle 20% kar hi diya tha ab it wants to sell 10% so this is the second time it is going to the public it is not happening for the first time For the first time, when it goes, it is known as IPO, and when it goes for the second time, it is known as FPO. That is known as follow-on public offer, right? So, company already listed on exchange. The company has already issued a share to the public in the past. Now, it intends to sell extra share to the public. So, such kind of offer is known as FPO, and IPO का मतलब पहली बार. Then rights issue. So, rights issue का मतलब क्या होता है कि whenever a company sells its share. To the existing shareholder, जो already उस company के shareholder है आप उसी को extra share दे रहे हो so इसको कहते हैं rights issue. 
सिमिलरली यू हैव प्रेफरेंशियल अलॉटमेंट सो प्रेफरेंशियल अलॉटमेंट का मतलब कि यू आर सेलिंग योर शेयर प्रेफरेंशियली टू अ सेलेक्ट ग्रुप ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स ठीक है यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू द पब्लिक यू आर नॉट सेलिंग इट टू योर एग्जिस्टिंग शेयर होल्डर रादर यू आर सेलिंग दो शेयर टू अ सेलेक्टेड ग्रुप ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स which can be anyone for a company so company has to decide to which investor it wants to sell the share theek hai so yahan pe kya hota hai ipo fpo mein you are selling the share to the public anyone can buy that rights issue mein you are selling the share to the existing shareholders aur yahan pe you are selling the share to a selected group of investors which can be anyone and then comes the qualified institutional placement yahan pe kya hai listed companies raise finance to issue of share to qualified institutional buyers qualified institutional buyers matlab jo big buyers hote hain for example mutual funds they are very sophisticated investors so mutual funds is a comes under this qualified institutional buyers that means they are qualified they are very mature they are sophisticated investors so agar koi company apne share ko directly qualified institutional buyers ko bechti hai na ki public ko in general deti hai so that is known as qualified institutional ठीक है, so, इस तरीके से आईपीओ एफ पीओ राइट इशू प्रेफरेंशियल अलॉटमेंट क्वालिफाइड इंस्टीट्यूशनल प्लेसमेंट ऑल दीज टर्म्स यूज इन द सर्वे सो यू शुड बी नोइंग अबाउट ऑल दीज फाइव थिंग्स देन हाउ द प्राइमरी मार्केट हैज फॉलो तो आप देख सकते हो कि लास्ट ईयर कितने सारे कंपनीज का आईपीओ आया जोमैटो का नाइका का ठीक है एल भी पहली बार आईपीओ पे गया सो लास्ट ईयर वॉज अज लार्ज नंबर ऑफ कंपनीज Which has went for that initial public offer. Initial मतलब पहली बार ATM ठीक है तो ये देखो आप IPOs ठीक है last year seventy six company was there in April to November twenty twenty one. This year from April to, or the last year April to November twenty twenty two it increased to hundred and four. So hundred and four companies went for IPO. ठीक है similarly देखो आपका preferential allotment two thirty three से two ninety eight हुआ ठीक है debt डेप्ट का मतलब आपका बॉन्ड बॉन्ड तो बॉन्ड में भी एट सेवेंटी वन से नाइन सेवेंटी सिक्स नाइन सिक्सटी सेवन पे गया है ठीक है एफ पी ओस जीरो से वन ठीक है सो जनरली द कैपिटल मार्केट हैज परफॉर्म वेरी वेल मेनी कंपनीज मेनी स्टार्टअप है ह्यूज इन्वेस्टमेंट हैज ऑल्सो कम सो देखो लास्ट ईयर इन्वेस्टमेंट आया था बहुत ज्यादा इस साल थोड़ा कम आया है बिकॉज दिस ईयर द मार्केट हैज बिन वेरी वॉलेटाइल बिकॉज ऑफ द मॉनिटरी टाइटनिंग बाई द यूएस So, जैसे यूएस मॉनेटरी टाइटनिंग करते रहेगी लेस मनी विल कम टू द इंडिया मोर मनी विल गो टू द यूएस दैट्स वाई जो अमाउंट रेज हुआ है वो काफी कम है एज कंपेयर टू व्हाट वाज़ द अमाउंट रेज लास्ट ईयर एंड दिस ईयर आल्सो विटनेस द लार्जेस्ट आईपीओ एवर इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया एल लाइफ इंश्योरेंस कॉर्पोरेशन उसका भी आईपीओ हुआ एंड दैट वॉज द लार्जेस्ट आईपीओ इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द इंडिया सो दिस इज हाउ यू शुड अंडरस्टैंड आईपीओ एफ पीओ राइट इशू क्यू प्रेफरेंशियल अलॉटमेंट राइट देन कम्स सेकेंडरी मार्केट तो सेकेंडरी मार्केट और प्राइमरी मार्केट में अंतर क्या होता है सो प्राइमरी मार्केट का मतलब फॉर एग्जाम्पल द ट्रांजेक्शन इज है फर्स्ट टाइम फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम द कंपनी एंड आई इशूड वन परसेंट शेयर टू यू सो दिस इज द प्राइमरी मार्केट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम आई एम सेलिंग दिस इज द फर्स्ट पॉइंट ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन राइट नाउ द सेकेंड नाउ वॉट विल यू डू यू विल सेल योर शेयर टू एनी अदर पब्लिक टू एनी अदर पर्सन so that is known as secondary market so wahan pe i am not selling my share i have sold my share to you this is for the first time now you are selling that share among yourself so this is known as a secondary market transaction so whatever happens in the sensex share market so that is nothing but the secondary market and ipos fpos are the primary market because wahan pe pehli bar share ko khareed ya becha ja raha hai but yahan pe the shares are traded among different people so this is the stock market right so this is the स्टॉक मार्केट ठीक है तो स्टॉक मार्केट परफॉर्मेंस वॉज ऑल्सो रेजिलियंट ठीक है सो यू कैन सी दिस आपको पता होगा लास्ट ईयर द स्टॉक मार्केट सो देखो ड्यूरिंग द पैंडमिक द स्टॉक मार्केट सॉ अ ग्रोथ ऑफ सेंसेक्स निफ्टी सॉ अ ग्रोथ ऑफ एटीन परसेंट एंड सेंसेक्स सॉ अ ग्रोथ ऑफ सेवेंटीन परसेंट तो आपको पता होगा पैंडमिक के समय बहुत सारा बहुत ज्यादा शेयर मार्केट इंक्रीज हुआ था देर वॉज अज इंक्रीज इन द शेयर मार्केट बट दिस ईयर द शेयर मार्केट हैज बीन वेरी वॉलेटाइल and the reason taking the money to the us because of the tightening by the us fed and because of that most of the countries this year most of the countries this year and other because of the conflict in europe high inflation so that's why the market this year has been very volatile and that's why most um, countries have saw have seen a negative increase 
in their stock market as compared to the last year. So you can see the Shanghai, China, Brazil, Korea, US, France, Germany, most of the stock market has seen a negative growth as compared to the last year. But just see about India, Nifty 3.7 and 3.9. That means the stock market increased during the pandemic because a huge money was pumped into the economy. So investors ke paas bahut zyada paisa tha. To wo pure dunya mein invest kar rahe the. India mein bhi bahut zyada paisa bahar se aaya. But gradually jab pandemic ke baad monetary tightening start hua, conflict in Europe ki wajah se inflation badha. To ab paisa market se nikalne laga. Aur US Fed ke tightening ki wajah se jitne bhi developing countries the, aur jitne bhi developed countries the, un sab ka paisa nikal ke kaha chala gaya? US economy mein, US stock market mein. Saath hi saath inflation and other things. तो इसकी वजह से जो इस साल जो स्टॉक मार्केट का परफॉर्मेंस था इट वाज नॉट एज गुड एज व्हाट वाज सीन ड्यूरिंग द पैंडेमिक बट डिस्पाइट ऑल दोस थिंग्स स्टिल इंडिया स्टॉक मार्केट हैज बीन रेजिलिएंट बिकॉज इट हैज सीन अ पॉजिटिव ग्रोथ रेट विज अ विज द लास्ट ईयर एज कंपेयर टू ऑल अदर कंट्रीज यू कैन सी दीज आर द ऑल अदर कंट्रीज एंड एवरी कंट्री हैव सीन अ नेगेटिव ग्रोथ रेट यू कैन सी दैट एवरी कंट्री चाइना ब्राजील कोरिया यूएस फ्रांस जर्मनी यूके हांगकांग जापान एवरी कंट्री has witnessed a negative growth rate of its stock market this year as compared to the last year ye kyu hua ye kyu hua ki india mein abhi bhi positive hai because hua kya ki jo foreign portfolio investors the those people who have come from abroad to invest in india those people took the money out because those people went back to the us and invested money but there came the domestic investors so last year domestic investors jo paisa lagaye hain share market mein wo kafi zyada badha hai जो डीमिट अकाउंट्स थे उसका जो रजिस्ट्रेशन था वो काफी ज्यादा बढ़ा है सो डिस्पाइट द एफ पी आई टेकिंग बैक देर मनी टू द यूएस द डोमेस्टिक इन्वेस्टर्स हैज इन्वेस्टेड ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ मनी टू द स्टॉक मार्केट एंड दैट्स वाई द स्टॉक मार्केट दिस ईयर ऑल्सो वॉज वेरी रेजिलियंट एज वॉट वॉज देर इन द लास्ट ईयर सो देखो रिटेल पार्टिसिपेशन द कैपिटल मार्केट हैज इंक्रीज ऑल दो नाउ इट हैज स्टार्टेड टू डिक्लाइन बिकॉज वो जो गोल्डन पीरियड ऑफ स्टॉक मार्केट था पैंडमिक के समय जहां पर लोग बहुत ज्यादा अट्रैक्ट हो गए थे स्टॉक मार्केट वॉज इंक्रीजिंग एट अ वेरी एक्सपोनशियल रेट नाउ द स्टॉक मार्केट हैज स्टार्टेड टू स्टेबिलाइज एंड दैट्स वाई द रिटेल पार्टिसिपेशन दैट इज द पार्टिसिपेशन ऑफ पब्लिक इन द स्टॉक मार्केट इज डिक्लाइनिंग ठीक है एफ पी आई देखो फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स तो फॉरन पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स ये देखो इस तरीके का यू कैन सी दिस so this is the year of pandemic 2020 to 2021 you can see this is the graph which basically shows fpi and this is the domestic institutional investors domestic investors and this is the mutual funds so we can see that during the pandemic year both domestic investors and mutual funds took out the money from the stock market but the same year foreign portfolio investors because us mein pandemic ke samay itna paisa chhapa gaya लंडन में इतना पैसा छापा गया कि दोस पीपल हैड ह्यूज सरप्लस ऑफ मनी सो दैट्स वाई वेर दे वर लुकिंग वेयर टू इन्वेस्ट दोस मनीज बिकॉज गवर्नमेंट हैज प्रिंटेड द मनी एंड गिवन गिवन इट टू दम सो देर सिटिंग ऑन अज कैश पाइल एंड दैट्स वाई देर लुकिंग अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड वेयर टू इन्वेस्ट एंड दैट्स वाई ड्यूरिंग दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम दे केम टू इंडिया एंड इन्वेस्टेड बट सिंस देन वेन द यूएस हैज स्टार्टेड विथ मॉनिटरी टाइटनिंग मोस्ट ऑफ द फॉर्म पोर्टफोलियो इन्वेस्टर्स हैव स्टार्टेड टू टेक आउट देर मनी फ्रॉम इंडिया वो इंडिया से पैसा निकालने लगे बट यहां पे देखो द डोमेस्टिक इन्वेस्टर्स पॉजिटिव में आ गया म्यूचुअल फंड्स पॉजिटिव में आ गया एंड दैट इज व्हाई स्टिल द टोटल मनी इन्वेस्टेड इन सेकेंडरी मार्केट हैज बीन पॉजिटिव सो डिस्पाइट एफपीआई टेकिंग बैक देयर मनी द डोमेस्टिक इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स एंड म्यूचुअल फंड हैव इन्वेस्टेड ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ मनी एंड दैट्स वाई अवर स्टॉक मार्केट हैज बीन रेजिलियंट दिस ईयर ऑल्सो देन The survey capital market me lastly talks about the threat from the crypto market. You know that cryptocurrency or crypto asset was something which everyone was attracted towards at some point of time. But now, if you will see the last year, most of the cryptocurrencies have completely crashed, and you know that cryptocurrency regulator exchange FTX has also collapsed. So that's why the survey talks about that we need to have a global collaboration because if we don't control cryptocurrencies, then what will be the impact of it? It will affect the overall financial stability of the country. It will affect the overall financial stability of the country. And to control or to regulate cryptocurrency, it cannot be done by a single country. You need to have a global collaboration. And hence the survey says that globally, every countries should come together and try to solve these issues. 
Otherwise, every country will face this financial stability issue, which might affect the basic fundamentals of any economy. So that's why the survey says that, and there's a necessity of common approach to regulate the crypto ecosystem, right? So this is all about the capital market. Next, the survey talks about, it gives some basic detail about the insurance market. So insurance market is also very important. So insurance market, right? So insurance market is also very important, right? So survey basically uses two terms, which is important for our prelims perspective. One, the survey uses insurance penetration. And the second, the survey uses insurance density. So these are the two terms which is important from our prelims perspective. What is insurance penetration? So insurance penetration is basically the insurance premium to GDP. Matab ek saal mein total insurance premium kitna pay kiya jata hai divided by GDP. So insurance premium divided by GDP. So that is that has been increasing and now it has increased to 4.2% of the GDP. So insurance penetration ka matab premium by GDP. Total, sare logo, kitna insurance premium dete hai. Life insurance or non-life insurance sab mila ke. And a vehicle insurance, phone insurance, laptop insurance, life insurance. Every insurance ka sab ka premium amount mila do. Divide kar do GDP se. So that is known as insurance penetration. And insurance density is equal to insurance premium by population. So total premium hai kitna? Ek saal mein usko divide kar do total country ka population. So that has also increased from US dollar 11.1. To US dollar 91 in 2021. That means the insurance premium divided by population has also increased. Most of the people were unaware about the insurance sector. awareness, and that's why none of the people were interested in going for life insurance or for vehicular insurance. But now, with more and more awareness and better product delivery by the government and the life insurance and the other insurance companies, now more and more people have been uh, uh, investing or have been depositing or have been coming under the insurance sector. Right. So, important government initiatives, people more awareness about health security post the COVID-19, strong demographic factors, that means more and more people are shift are, are, are in the younger age population and they are much more aware about the importance of insurance. A conducive regulatory environment, product innovations and a vibrant distribution channels are supporting the insurance markets. So this way, the survey has given the diagram of how the insurance penetration is increasing, how the insurance density is increasing. And these are the different schemes which has been brought by the government. This is why I have written it over here. You can go and check more about these things because here is a brief description. Hai. But in exam, these schemes might be asked, what is Aatmanibar uh, Ayushman Bharat Yojana, what is Priyam Suraksha Bhima Yojana, Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana, Fasal Bhima Yojana. So you can go and check uh, on the Google and uh, on the government's website, what are these schemes, who are covered, how much insurance benefit is being provided, what is the premium which someone has to pay, which ministry has brought these schemes. So you prelims ke liye aapke factual informations aapko ho jayenge. so you can go and check it on the internet. Then similarly, pension sector. Pension sector is also growing at a very good pace. Survey talks about so pension. What, why we need a pension? It is important because in old age, you're not that productive. So you need a basic social security at one point of age. The rise of nuclear family. So most of the old people or most of the parents are living alone and their child is working in cities. So that's why you again need a good pension uh, so that you are financially independent. Rise in the cost of living. Increased longevity, so now more and more people are, the life expectancy has increased in India because of the better health infrastructure. Assured monthly income ensures a dignified life in a gold age. It is also, it is also important to, uh, uh, to live a life uh, of dignity. That is why uh, it also ensures a dignified life in an old age. Then, what are the various pension schemes? So, pension schemes, again, you go to Google. Se check karna. Because uh, survey mein schemes mentioned tha, so that's why it again becomes important for your prelims part. So you can go and check Google mein check karna apne se, what are these schemes and what provisions are there. So first we have National Social Assistance Program. This is a flagship program. There are many sub-schemes. Like we have National Old Age Pension Scheme, Indira Gandhi National Window Pension Scheme, Indira Gandhi National Disability Pension Schemes. So these are the schemes, insurance schemes which is basically for the poor, underprivileged people. And, uh, uh, the total beneficiary of all these schemes collectively is 4.7 crore. 
देन आपको पता है 2007 में हमारे पास नेशनल पेंशन सिस्टम आया एनपीएस ना व्हाट इज एनपीएस एंड ओपीएस ये देखो आप क्या होता है ये सो फर्स्ट इज द ओल्ड पेंशन सिस्टम जो आपको पता पहले के गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉयज के लिए होता था इट वाज द ओल्ड पेंशन सिस्टम सो ओल्ड पेंशन सिस्टम में क्या होता था कि यू विल गेट अ यू विल गेट अ फिक्स्ड पेंशन you will get a fixed pension of 50% of your last drawn salary of your last drawn salary so suppose you are earning 1 lakh before retirement to so retirement ke pehle aap just 1 lakh earn kar rahe the to aapko retirement ke baad kitna milega you will be getting 50000 that is fixed that is fixed you will be getting 50% of what you were drawing just before the retirement and also you will be getting a lump sum amount lump sum amount theek hai lump sum amount theek hai to 50000 aapko per mahine milega if you are earning 1 lakh and also you will be getting a fixed amount at the age of retirement and the contribution the contribution to this pension amount the contribution to this pension amount was entirely was entirely borne by the government theek hai matlab jo pension ka kharch hoga because at the end you are getting 50% if you lost on salary and also you are getting a fixed amount at the time of retirement so who is going to pay for that thing you are not going to pay anything the entire corpus the entire fund which is required has to be paid by the government has to be paid by the government so this was the basic problem this is why the government has to spend huge amount of money on the pension and because of that the government is not able to have the resources to spend on capital infrastructure right so that is why the scheme has now been changed so two things is important pehla it is fixed how much you will be getting 50% of your last drawn salary to ye fixed hai ye itna aapko milega hi milega there is no if and buts and the second the entire cost for this thing was borne by the government now what is new pension scheme which has been brought by 2000 which has been brought in 2004 so initially it was only for the government employees but in 2009 it has been extended to all people within 80 to 60 years of age sare log ke liye whether they belong to unorganized sector also it does not matter but now any people can get itself herself or himself registered under the new pension scheme in 2000 which has been brought in 2004 ab isme kya hai dekho yahan pe your pension is not fixed your pension amount is your pension amount is not fixed aapka pension amount fixed nahi hai suppose this is the your this is your nps account this is your nps account and sub and isme aapko kuch paise contribute karne padenge is nps account mein aapko kuch paise contribute karne padenge pehle kya tha aapko kuch contribute nahi karna tha because sara kharch kon kar raha hai government but yahan pe you have to also contribute to your pension corpus so you have to pay 10% of your salary of your salary jo bhi salary aapka you are earning 1 lakh you are earning 2 lakh you are earning 1 crore matlab jo bhi aapka salary out of that 10% you have to contribute to the nps account and 14% of that amount will be paid by the government So, जितना आप दोगे उसका 14% परसेंट गवर्नमेंट भी एड करेगी एनपीएस अकाउंट में सो यहां पर देख रहे हो बोथ द गवर्नमेंट एंड पब्लिक बोथ हैव टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू देयर पेंशन सो दैट्स वाई अब यहां पर क्या हुआ गवर्नमेंट का खर्च काफी कम हो गया ठीक है सो दैट इज वन मेजर इंप्रूवमेंट की नाउ द गवर्नमेंट पहले क्या था एंटायर अमाउंट वॉज बींग बॉन्ड बाई द गवर्नमेंट नाउ द गवर्नमेंट इज ऑल्सो पेइंग एंड ऑल्सो द that person who will get the pension that person has to also pay some amount of money into its nps corpus now this nps account may suppose you have deposited 20 lakhs 
आपका टोटल अमाउंट दस साल बीस साल जितना भी काम किया हो आपने ट्वेंटी लैक्स एक्यूमुलेटेड हो गया है तो ये जो ट्वेंटी लैख है दिस इज बींग इन्वेस्टेड दिस इज बींग इन्वेस्टेड बाई पी एफ आर डी ए एक रेगुलेटरी एजेंसी है इसका फुल फॉर्म है आपका अ पेंशन फंड रेगुलेटरी पेंशन फंड रेगुलेटरी एंड डेवलपमेंटल अथॉरिटी सो अब क्या होगा दिस पर्टिकुलर रेगुलेटरी बॉडी हैज अपॉइंटेड सम हैज अपॉइंटमेंट सन अपॉइंटेड सन इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रोफेशनल्स इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रोफेशनल्स एंड दीज इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रोफेशनल्स have to invest this 20 lakh into different different kind of market share market bond market any other market to ye jo 20 lakh hai aapka total accumulated amount ye aapka different different market mein invest hoga and now at the time of retirement now at the time of your retirement this 20 lakh jo aapka pura iske through aaya tha this 20 lakh might become 40 lakh because of the right investment and these are the very smart सोफेस्टिकेटेड इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रोफेशनल्स तो इनका यही काम है तो ये आपके 20 लाख को बढ़ा के कितना कर देंगे 40 लाख उस 40 लाख में से आपको यू विल बी गेटिंग यू हैव टू परचेज एनुटी कि उस बार मान लो एट द टाइम ऑफ योर रिटायरमेंट ये 20 लाख कन्वर्ट हो जाता है बिकॉज ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट इट डबल्स एंड नाउ योर टोटल कॉर्पस इज फोर्टी लाख अब इस फोर्टी लाख में से आपको कुछ लमसम अमाउंट लेना पड़ेगा फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू टू ट्वेंटी लाख ऑफ लमसम अमाउंट एंड बाकी ट्वेंटी लाख का You have purchased an annuity. Annuity का मतलब कि every month you will be getting some amount of money. So twenty lakh का different different companies होते हैं, वो उस तरीके से annuity आपको sell करते हैं, so you can buy that annuity from any you know company which has been empanelled by the government. आप उनसे एक annuity खरीद सकते हो, जिसके अंदर आपको every month एक fixed salary मिलेगा, fixed pension मिलेगा, ठीक है? Every month you will be getting some fixed pension. You have to purchase that annuity. तो ये है एनपीएस सो एनपीएस में दो इंपॉर्टेंट चेंजेस है पहला कि यहां पे द एंटायर कॉस्ट इज नॉट बॉन्ड बाय गवर्नमेंट सो दैट इज व्हाई इट इज फिजिकली बेनिफिशियल इट इज फिजिकली इट इज फिजिकल साउंड सेकेंड द पेंशन अमाउंट इज नॉट फिक्स्ड इट इज नॉट फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ योर लास्ट डॉन सैलरी इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन हाउ मच यू हैव इन्वेस्टेड इन दिस कॉर्पस वॉट इज द रिटर्न बिकॉज दीज मनी आर बींग इन्वेस्टेड और ये हो सकता है बीस लाख कल को पचास लाख हो जाए या बीस लाख तीस लाख हो जाए कम तो होगा नहीं इट विल बी ट्वेंटी लैक्स माइट कन्वर्ट टू सिक्सटी लैक हु नोज दैट डिपेंड्स अपॉन हाउ इफेक्टिवली यूर इन्वेस्टिंग दैट मनी सो दैट इज बाई द रिटर्न विच यू विल बी गेटिंग इज ऑल्सो नॉट फिक्स सो टू चेंजेस फर्स्ट यहाँ पे द गवर्मेंट इज नॉट ओनली कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग गवर्मेंट एज वेल एज द पर्सन दे बोथ आर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग एंड सेकेंड द रिटर्न विच वॉज इन ओपीएस फिक्स एट फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ यूर लास्ट ऑन सैलरी in this it is not fixed right it is depending upon the market right so this is uh, the thing which they have talked about is right so ye aap dekh lena the same thing is written over here yahan pe ops aur nps ke beech mein i have given the comparison so whatever we have discussed it is written over here similarly atal pension yojana has also been brought by the government and this is basically for the under privileged people how they they can be brought under the social security net how they can be brought under this pension sector so that's why uh, uh, this scheme has been brought again you have to go to the google and check out which ministry and other things are responsible for that and uh, overall uh, the pension uh, sector is uh, is bound to grow because more and more people are getting uh, you know uh, awareness about the pension sector and uh, hence uh, their awareness is also increased and uh, the income is also going to increase so more and more people will be contributing to this thing so that is uh, how the survey concludes by giving a broad overview about the pension sector so this is uh, uh, the fourth chapter we have completed in the uh, most uh, comprehensive manner so that uh, you are able to answer every question uh, from your prelims as well as from mains perspective right so uh, uh, you have to understand what is standing deposit facility you have to understand what is insurance penetration insurance premium what is capital liquidity issue because until unless your concepts are not clear then uh, 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 you will not be able to answer any question in your exam so again revise this thing watch the lecture again if you have any problem and uh, if you have any doubt you can put your uh, uh, question in the comment box so that uh, i can address it whenever i see those comment right so i hope you enjoy the lecture uh, again we will come with the chapter number 5
in the coming days. So stay tuned to the channel. If you uh, like this video, please like our channel and subscribe to it. Thank you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.